welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Michael Chong. He is a radiation oncologist and he wrote the Kevin MD article, How MRI Guided Radiation Therapy is Changing the Paradigm in Pancreatic Cancer. Michael, welcome to the show. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. And it, it's uh, it's really exciting to be here and, and to share uh, some of what we've been doing to hopefully advance the, the outcomes for patients with pancreas cancer. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? So I'm a radiation oncologist, like you mentioned, here at Miami Cancer Institute. I am a, a, a specialist in terms of radiation therapy for gastrointestinal cancers, especially liver and pancreas cancer. I also am the medical director and, and oversee clinical research for our department here as well. And I have been here for about five to six years since the Cancer Center opened. So I don't have very many radiation oncologists on the show. What are some challenges that face the field today? Sure, it's a great question. You know, radiation therapy has, has evolved tremendously over the last uh, several decades. And as a technology-based field, as technology has advanced, you know, our, our ability to treat patients has expanded. You know, some of the, the limitations was really where, where it has tremendous benefit really lies in three different uh, uh, buckets, I would call them. So one is any state-of-the-art radiation therapy today is basically done using scans that are done before treatment to help position the patient. But those scans can have some, some suboptimal quality, and those are based off of CT scans, okay? So that's one. So CT scan, you know, is, is something where the, the detailed soft tissue anatomy sometimes is not well seen. Number two is the imaging that's done before treatment to ensure millimeter precision and accuracy is something that is not able to be done while treatment's being delivered. So it's done before, but not during. So that leads to some uncertainty. And then third, but not least, is that the radiation therapy that's delivered to patients typically in consecutive days and potentially over many weeks is basically the same carbon copy treatment delivery plan, if you will, all over those same days. So the modification of those plans to account for changes between each day in, in the internal anatomy is something that's not able to be done in real time or, or quickly. Um, so that does limit uh, the radiation therapy that can be done in terms of the safe doses that can be used, uh, especially for tumors, um, for example, near the bowel, which is very sensitive to radiation. So you have a platform now. Is there anything about radiation oncologists or radiation oncology, any misconceptions that you like to clear up? You know, I think one is that we all sit in a, you know, dark, dark caves in the, in the basement somewhere, but no, you know, radiation therapy is something that actually is one of the most utilized forms of treatment for cancer patients. In fact, about two thirds of all cancer patients have an indication to receive radiation therapy. And that could be either palliatively, but you know, the majority of patients will receive potentially curative uh, radiation therapy either before or after surgery, or even in some cases, uh, just the radiation itself can be curative. All right, so let's transition now into your Kevin MD article. It's titled, How MRI-Guided Radiation Therapy is Changing the Paradigm in Pancreatic Cancer. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Sure, absolutely. So um, the article really focuses on uh, some recent work that, that we put together at Miami Cancer Institute, along with uh, colleagues at Henry Ford. Uh, in Detroit, as well as uh, Achi Badem University in, in Turkey, really focusing on uh, this new state-of-the-art type of radiation therapy called MRI-guided radiotherapy. That's really transforming how radiation is delivered, period. You know, the analogy I would use is, is how immunotherapy has transformed the medical oncology world or how robotic surgery transforms surgery. It really fundamentally changes how radiation is delivered. You know, going back to the, the, to the three sort of limitations I mentioned before with, with the state-of-the-art as of today with CT guidance, in that MRIs, if you're able to use them to direct uh, your radiation, it, it inherently give you much better soft tissue uh, contrast and you're able to see much better. Two is there's an ability to now continuously image the patient with MRI real time throughout the course of treatment. So you can see very fine changes in, in the internal anatomy and actually account for those changes. So one example is for pancreas cancers, as you breathe, your pancreas actually moves and the tumor moves. So if you're trying to deliver millimeter precise radiation, being able to, to know where your tumor is at any given time and actually turn the beam on and off when the tumor moves in and out of the right position becomes game changing. Um, it allows you to give a significantly higher dose. And then that third limitation I mentioned before is where before you, you normally would give a carbon copy kind of treatment each day over many days or many weeks. The MRI guided platform allows us to basically get a new image each day, look at the changes in the anatomy 
and actually in real time in just a few minutes change the treatment completely so that the doses are safe to the organs nearby and, and a safe doses given to the tumor. So using this technology, and we were one of the, the first centers in the country to, to begin treating with something called the Meridian LENAC, which is, an, which is a device that, uh, of course, uses MRI to guide radiation. We, we have been exploring a significantly higher doses of radiation to pancreas tumors that are not resectable with the goal of achieving better long-term outcomes. You know, better being, of course, tumor control and potentially longer survival and doing that safely. And, and this is a, 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 a paradigm that typically is done as an outpatient in five consecutive days non-invasive, there's no anesthesia, no, no IVs or anything. It's all completely non-invasive, millimeter precise treatment that delivers what's called an ablative dose. So it's a dose that, that has effects potentially as maybe as good as surgery and certainly higher than what is done as, as you know, on, on any other platform. And in fact, the doses that we have been giving have been actually upwards of twice as high as what you could safely give and using other machines or other technologies. So the data that we um, included in the, in the, in the article I basically summarized an analysis that we did with the other institutions, institutions I mentioned of almost 150 patients with unresectable pancreas cancer who received this ablative MR-guided radiation therapy. Uh, and we looked at how they did in the long term. Uh, so with long-term follow-up, what we saw was really tremendous. It was really exciting uh, that patients seem to do much, much better. And what, what does that mean? So historically, with standard doses of radiation, the median survival for these patients is somewhere probably in the 12 month range or 13 month range. What we saw in, in our almost 150 patient series was median survival of 26 months. I mean, that, that's a almost, that's more than doubling of what we would expect otherwise. The other exciting outcomes we saw were that the two year survival with standard radiation doses is somewhere around the 20% range. That's been replicated over many studies over many years. And in our analysis, we saw that was actually over 50%. So again, representing potentially a doubling in what can be achieved in terms of long-term survival. And, and, you know, despite these high doses that we've been delaying and the tremendous outcomes we've, we've seen, patients have tolerated this very well. So even patients in their 80s and 90s are routinely treat with these high doses. And because they are so precise and those doses are delivered just to the tumor, patients really don't have major side effects at all. In fact, most patients really just have mild side effects, if any, to the point where we have a pretty large and growing international presence where patients will travel quite great distances for this type of treatment and patients will come in, get their treatment and leave the next day, potentially on a plane back to Asia or wherever they came from. And in our study, we showed that that major severe side effects were extremely uncommon with this. So just to give us some context, before the advent of MRI guided radiation therapy, how is pancreatic cancer traditionally or conventionally treated? So that's a great question. You know, the outside of MR guided radiotherapy, so CT scans are what guide a lot of radiation therapy, including that for pancreas cancer. There are five day regimens using CT guidance that are routine at, at many centers. However, the dose that's delivered per day and the cumulative dose is significantly less than what we have been delivering using MRI guidance, just because it's, it's not because that dose is effective, but that's really just because that's the safe dose that can be given. Uh, there are other regimens over many days and many weeks. So another common regimen is, again, using CT guidance is, is a, a regimen over about five to six weeks. But, you know, and, and those outcomes are, again, not, you know, th th those, those outcomes could obviously be uh, improved upon. So tell me what kind of pancreatic cancer patients would be suitable for MRI-guided radiation therapy? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. But to that point, not every single pancreas cancer patient probably benefits from MRI guidance. The Really, the question would be, where does this high dose matter in terms of improving at least the local control that, that might translate into survival? And that's probably in patients who, one, don't have dysmetastases in different parts of the body, who really have a confined tumor in the pancreas itself that cannot be removed by surgery. And surgery as of today still is the gold standard for pancreas cancer, but the fact is only about 15% of patients with pancreas cancer at diagnosis have resectable disease, with the majority of the others having just large tumors that are encasing some of the major abdominal vasculature that simply cannot be resected. Uh, so it's really those patients who have non-metastatic, you know, localized but advanced tumors that, that probably benefit the most uh, from this. Can you give us a sense of how often this treatment is being used? How many medical centers across the country is using MRI-guided radiation therapy for pancreatic cancer? 
So this ablative type of, of MR guided radiotherapy is something that, you know, is at a small but growing number of centers in the U.S. and also worldwide. That in part is because the adoption of this technology, you know, and obviously was, was initially small, but and to give a sense, we, we were the second center in the United States to start treating with this particular machine in 2018. And the number of centers worldwide now, I think is somewhere in the the 40 to 50. So it's, it's a small number, but it is growing. Most MR guided centers do have a, a high utilization of this technology for pancreas cancers, just because it is, it's sort of almost built to treat these types of tumors that need higher doses than you could safely give otherwise and tumors that move that type of thing. So it, it is still a limited type of resource in a way in terms of what's available geographically. It is growing, but, but, but patients, you know, fortunately, you know, if, if patients do need to travel outside of their their backyard, you know, this regimen is, is pretty quick and it's pretty well tolerated. You know, and most patients are home within a week. Any downsides or cost considerations that we need to consider when referring patients for potential MR guided radiation therapy? So in terms of cost, you know, this is, this is categorized as, as SBRT. So stereotactic body radiation therapy, you know, is basically describes five radiation therapy in five days for these pancreas cancers. So in terms of cost, this is covered by insurance just because it is delivered in five days. There's not actually a cost differential based on how much radiation you give though. So as I mentioned before, the five-day regimen using CT guidance is something that is routine. It's part of, you know, part of standard of care for inoperable pancreas cancers. So there really are not any real major barriers for insurance authorization for, for this type of treatment, despite that much higher doses. And in terms of any downsides to patients? You know, not really, I would say any downside uh, to patients. You know, I, I would say that the, the treatment process itself is, you know, I mentioned before, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy for patients to get through in that there's no anesthesia. It's completely non-invasive. Patients come in and go back to work and go golfing the same day, that type of thing. So there's really not a downside from that standpoint. You know, patients do need to be a candidate to have an MRI, you know, both from not having in incompatible implanted devices, you know, a hip, hip replacement or something like that, which most devices nowadays are MRI compatible. You know, there's also the claustrophobia element of, of having an MRI scan. And the, the, the treatment machine that, that we've been using is just like any other MRI scanner. It's a narrower bore than a, than a CT scanner. So there are claustrophobia concerns that some patients may have. One interesting and really helpful part of, of our system is that there's the, the patients actually will see a screen when they're in the machine. There's actually a mirror system where they actually see a monitor outside the room of their MRI in real time. So they actually will see kind of what's going on. And in fact, what's really interesting is that the, the, the system is so advanced it actually automatically will track where their tumor is and show the patient this as they're moving. And, and, and there's basically a target area that they need to kind of get their tumor into with based on their breathing. And, and so that turns the machine on and off itself. And it actually helps engage the patients and it helps the time go by faster. And, and those claustrophobic patients rather who uh, otherwise may have had a lot of difficulty with the treatment are just so engaged in this that actually I've never had a patient who's been claustrophobic and not been able to get their treatment. We're talking to Michael Chong. He's a radiation oncologist and he wrote the Kevin MD article, how MRI guided radiation therapy is changing the paradigm in pancreatic cancer. So Michael, what do you see is the pathway of MRI guided therapy in the near future? So MRI guidance, you know, I think is something that, that is, is, is and will transform the treatment of pancreas cancer, but also potentially all other cancers that, that need radiation therapy. In terms of pancreas cancer specifically, you know, the data that we've uh, generated and others have generated as well, pointed to significantly improved survival, um, has now sparked a lot of interest in, in exploring this, especially prospectively. Fortunately, we, we are now pursuing a phase three randomized trial in locally advanced pancreas cancer patients, exploring this, randomizing patients to chemotherapy alone versus chemotherapy plus ablative radiation therapy. This will be a, a, an international trial looking to accrue about 300 patients and hoping to, to really confirm that there is a significant benefit for these patients with the addition of this treatment. And potentially that means that long-term survival is possible for pancreas cancer patients despite you know, a, a historically poor prognosis. And if people wanted to read more or research more about this technology, what kind of resources can you recommend? 
So I think if you if you just do a web search for ablative radiation therapy or, or, or MRI guided radiation therapy, you know that's probably a starting point. The the technology that we use at our center is something called the Meridian Linac. It's made by the company, so there's a lot of good resources there as well. And also there's been a number of publications. If you wanted to do a PubMed search on MR guided radiotherapy, we at MCI and, and many others have have started publishing pretty provocative and encouraging outcomes for for patients with this. And my final question, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? So, you know, I think the take-home message would be, you know, MRI guidance uh, is something that really is a paradigm change in radiation oncology. It really is expanding who we can treat and how aggressively we can safely treat patients. And the ability to safely deliver ablative doses of radiation, especially for, for tumors that are not operable, really, I think, is going to transform how we think about radiation, uh, and most importantly, what the outcomes for patients might be. And and potentially unresectable tumors might actually become curable at the end of the day if we're able to leverage the the technology appropriately. Michael, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me.